This video demonstrates how the Simon game will operate if it's working properly. It starts up and presents the user with the name of the game, instructions on how to proceed, and the length of the sequence. And it will wait until the user clicks the screen before it initiates play. So we'll click the screen. Now we just follow the computer as it presents colors to us, red, yellow, red, yellow, yellow, red, yellow, yellow, yellow. And it says, uh, I have this little splash screen, but you don't need to do that, I just did that for fun. Um, and it says that I was successful. Now if I want to play again, I can um, hit that uh, screen quickly and it'll present me a new game. The new game sequence is one longer to make it a little more difficult. And again, I won that. Um, so I did my little screen, which you don't need to do, but you know, per, give a message like yay or something like that. But I don't want to play this again, so I'm going to let it uh, end. And now I'll be back to four. Um, whenever a game ends, what you do is you present the user with the length of the sequence that they were successful for. So for example, um, if I um, played this again, there's two. But I'm going to make a mistake, so I'll do the first two blues and then hit a red. And then it just tells me that, okay, I got up to two, but that's all. Or let's say that I'll make a, you know, I'll start playing the game, but then all of a sudden I get distracted. Uh, there's some noise just in the room, I, I, but the game times out. In that case, I only got one correct one. And so it goes back. So for your own game, it's not necessary that you um, tell the user or provide feedback as to why the game ended. You can. It's not required. Um, I'm trying to keep it relatively simple. But if you'd like to add that kind of feedback to your game, feel free. But it's not required. And that's how the game is supposed to behave.